أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه خاتم أنبيائه وسيد رسله نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى قيام يوم الدين Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh an important part when we come to discuss the biography and the legacy of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari alayhi salam is the idea of the preparation for the occultation of the Holy Twelfth Imam in, it, in that the Imam alayhi salam had a number of strategies and ways to ensure that the people recognized the transformation of what was about to happen. The scholars mentioned that عصر الإمام العسكري عليه السلام عصر الانتقال من عصر الحضور إلى عصر الغيبة. The time of the Imam of Al-Askari is a time of transformation or movement from the time of presence to the time of occultation. And it's an incredibly difficult time if we were to talk about how the people were not used to this notion at all um, for approximately over 200 years or more, they were used to Imams one after the other um, being uh, in their presence and referring to them when it comes to problems and challenges and being of course spiritual guides, guides in all aspects of life. Imam al-Askari challenged and came forward to help people understand the transformation or what is going to happen in two main ways. The first was uh, ideological or intellectual preparation. How he did this was that he emphasized the notion of believing in the unseen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The Qur'an comes forward and talks about the characteristics of المتقين. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah says the fundamental first quality of the believers is that the pious ones is that they believe in the unseen. The Imam alayhi salam in numerous narrations would encourage them to be patient to hold on to their belief, to remain strong, told them that there will be many tribulations, many trials, many tests that will indeed afflict them, but they should be determined and understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to this area. And in order to demonstrate the uh, wisdom of Imam al-Askari alayhi salam and this particular method of the ideological intellectual preparation, so to speak, of the Ummah for a ghayba, we find the hadith that is narrated from Abu Ali ibn Hammam that is found in the book uh, Kamaluddin in volume 2, uh, page 409. He said that I heard Muhammad ibn Uthman al-Amri uh, say, I heard my father say, he uh, said that uh, Imam al-Askari alayhi salam was asked uh, about the proof of God. And he responded, Imam said, إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لَا تَخْلُوا مِنْ حُجَّةٍ لِلَّهِ عَلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ The earth shall never be vowed of the proof of Allah on this earth until a day of judgment. وَإِنْ مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْ إِمَامَ زَمَانِهِ مَاتَ مِيتَةَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ Whomsoever dies not knowing and having cognizance and deep recognition of the Imam of their time dies the death of ignorance, jahiliyyah. فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Imam alayhi salam said, إِنَّ هَذَا حَقٌّ كَمَا أَنَّ النَّهَارَ حَقٌّ This is the truth, just like how you and I see the daytime. They see the sun. No one can deny that it is what? Daytime. فَقِيلَ لَهِ يَبْنَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ 
فمن الحجة والإمام بعدك يا ابن رسول الله who is the حجة the إمام after you فقال ابني محمد هو الإمام والحجة بعدي my son محمد is the إمام and the proof of Allah سبحانه وتعالى after me من مات ولم يعرفه مات ميتة الجاهلية whomsoever dies and does not know him dies the death of ignorance أما إن له غيبة يحار فيها الجاهلون Definitely, he is going to go into occultation. The ignorant ones are going to be confused. The ignorant ones are going to be bemused. They don't know what is going on. It is a matter of surprise for them. وَيُهْلَكُ فِيهَا الْمُبْطِلُونَ وَيُكَذَّبُ فِيهَا الْوَقَاتُونَ The ones who come forward and reject this particular occultation, they will perish, it will be destroyed. And the ones who claim they know when he will reappear are liars. ثم يخرج فكأني أنظر إلى الأعلام البيض تخفق فوق رأسه بنجف الكوفة I can see that when he re reappears, I can see the white flags. It is as if they're being raised where? in Najaf or around the area of Al-Kufa. We have another hadith which is also found in the same book by Shaykh al-Saduq. The Imam alayhi salam, notice this is part of the preparation, the intellectual preparation to say to people, there will be an occultation. There is an Imam and there will be an occultation, so get yourselves ready. كَأَنِّي بِكُمْ وَقَدْ اِخْتَلَفْتُمْ بَعْدِي فِي الْخَلْفِ مِنِّي I can see that after me you will be somehow disagreeing about who is the Imam after me. أما أن المقر بالأئمة بعد رسول الله المنكر لولدي كمن أقر بجميع أنبياء الله ورسله ثم أنكر نبوة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله Very strong by Imam Al-Askari عليه السلام He says the one who comes forward and rejects the Imam of Imam Al-Mahdi عليه السلام is the one who has agreed about the imam, uh, the, the imam uh, like the one who has agreed about the prophets before the prophet and has rejected the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. وَالْمُنْكِرْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ جَمِيعَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ The one who denies and says, no, the prophet wasn't a prophet, he has denied all the other prophets. لِأَنَّ طَاعَةَ آخِرِنَا كَطَاعَةَ أَوِّلِنَا because the obedience to the last one of us is the same as the obedience to the first one. Then he says, أَمَا إِنَّ لِوَلَدِي غَيْبَ يَرْتَابُ فِيهَا النَّاسِ إِلَّا مَنْ عَسَمَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ There will be an occultation. There will be the fact that my son will disappear from the views of people and there will be people who will be shaken by this except those who what? Except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed protected. And therefore, we find uh, these and many other narrations found regarding the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, and his emphasis on the notion of occultation. The second area is with regards to establishment of the wikala as well as the answering of the questions that were presented to Imam al-Askari alayhi salam through the style of writing and letters. The representatives, of course, the wukala, are crucial when it comes to the link with the Imam, given that the security was incredibly tight. It helped the Shia to somehow have some kind of connection with the Imam. They took on the role of propagation, the spreading of the teachings, and therefore, what happened was, you saw that Imam al-Azkari continued this network of wukala representatives in many parts of the world, a kind of institution that grew as we got closer to the occultation. You find that if you compare the number of the representatives of Imam al-Azkari to the number of representatives to Imam al or the Imam al-Hadi, they were more in number. As an example, we have uh, uh, the uh, names that have been presented to us and have been found that highlight the extent of their presence, these representatives of the Imam uh, alayhi salam. For instance, 
you find Ibrahim ibn Abda al Naysapuri. He was from the companions of Imam al Askari and al Hadi. He was their representative in Naysapur. Ayyub ibn Nuh ibn Darraj al Nakhai. He was also a wakil for Imam al Askari and al Hadi. Ayyub ibn uh, Al Bab. Uh, he was also in Naysapur. Ahmad ibn Ishaq al Razi. Ahmad ibn Ishaq al Qummi al Ash'ari. He was their representative in Qum. Ja'far ibn Suhail al-Sayyqil, Hafs ibn Umru al-Amri al-Jambar, al-Jammal, Uthman ibn Sa'id al-Amri al-Samman. Uh, of course, he was the first of the four representatives. Uh, Ali ibn Ja'far al-Hammani, al-Qasim ibn Ala al-Hamadani. And we have others, Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Muhammad al-Hamadani, and many others that have their names have been mentioned as the wukala of and the representatives which really kept the connection of the people with the Imam Salawatullahi Wasallamu Alaihi. Another very important element when it came to the preparation for the occultation of the Imam Al Mahdi Ta'ala Farajah by Imam Al Askari and the pivotal role that he played was the establishment of a network and the spreading of the encouragement for the fuqaha and the scholars to educate and to teach people. Imam al-Askari establishes Madrasatul Fuqaha, the school of scholars and narrators. And in fact, he was not the one who established, but rather continued this at efforts all along from the time of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq and the other Imams, peace and blessings be upon him. Um, Imam salam approved some of the fiqh and narration books collected at his time and before thanked the authors and set the scene for the increase in of the role of these fuqaha, these scholars. And of course we have the famous narration in volume 2, page 263 of the book Al-Ihtijaj as well as the tafsir attributed to Imam Al-Askari The famous narration that says, When it comes to the scholars, Jurists, those who have control over themselves, who protect their religion, go against their desires, they are obedient to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people should follow him. And this really paved the way for the increase presence of the scholars that of course play a very important role today as the protectors of faith and the ones who keep the message of the religion of Islam as taught by the Ahl al-Bayt alive. As an example, <clears throat> 213 companions and narrators of hadith of Imam al-Askari are found in certain books, such as for instance, Muhammad ibn al-Hasan ibn al-Safa, he died in the year 290. He had approximately 40 books. Sheikh al um uh, mentioned him as one of the Ashab of Imam al Askari. His books ranged from Ahkam such as Salah and Psalm, um, the Holy Quran, Jihad, etc. They were there really for the tarbiyah, for the correct upbringing of the communities and the Muslim ummah in general. It paved the way for the role of the uh, scholars of, uh, when it comes to the al ghaybat al-Kubra of Imam uh, al-Mahdi Ajarallahu Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, the importance of the uh, guidance and the role that they actually played um, in many shapes or form in society by and large. The Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, of course had many other establishments and achievements. One of them was to challenge the so-called deviant groups, the groups that posed a danger and a threat to the correct theology and beliefs, such as Al-Waqifah, the ones who after Imam Al-Kadhim, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, would stop, the ones who stopped and did not follow Imam al-Ridha but not only that, they were accused 
And they were found, of course, of corruption because of materialism and taking of wealth. They did not obey the Imam of the time, Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida and the Imams that uh, came after him. And you find that the Imam alayhi salam would challenge them and would uh, make sure that they are exposed to the people. And likewise, there was a group of people known as al mufawwada These people also were dangerous in terms of their wrong beliefs, wrong ideologies. They used to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Prophet and he then وَفَوَّضَ إِلَيْهِ خَلْقَ الدُّنْيَا فَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقِ لِمَا فِيهَا He gave him then the creation of this world, therefore he created this world. Or they say Amir al-Mu'mineen or the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum did this. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the creation of this world. And Imam sallallahu alayhi challenged them and refuted their arguments and warned against them and their wrong beliefs. Indeed, this and much more can be mentioned about the important role played by Imam Al-Hasan Al-Askari We pray to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to help us honor the great legacy of this Imam. There are lessons to be learned and the Imam salam also ensured that he left vital instructions for his Shia to follow, such as the famous hadith of the signs of the believer, that they wear the ring on their right hand, that they express and mention the basmala loudly, that they uh, perform sajda on the clay, on the turba, and they perform the 51 rak'ats a day, and of course perform the ziyara of Arba'een of Imam al Hussein. peace and blessings be upon him. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the love of Ahl al-Bayt in our hearts and to make us of their followers. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallillahumma wa sallam ala sayyid al-mursaleen Muhammad wa ala ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Mm-hmm.